With universal law as the cornerstone of the system, we can extrapolate potential ways the system can function. In this system, housing is never in question and we have access to a database of available rooms. In this system, work is never in question and we have access to a database of available jobs. From the room that we claim in the community that we choose, we can choose local jobs without the continual re-vetting of our profile. We simply log into the room we wish to claim directly, and then we can claim shifts or tasks directly from an available database. We can take on various roles simultaneously and advance in each of them independently through our experience and merit. Our communities should become advanced production centers that integrate production into harmonious local activities like gardening and farming. Our local representation should be as accessible and as close as your local grocery store and it should allow for and encourage participation. Our communities should be advanced agrarian environments where our primary responsibility is the production of excess surplus locally. We can work together in harmony to produce excess surplus locally, and nothing more should be demanded of us. Each citizen starts off with two 100 credit residual income accounts. One 100 credit residual income account can be converted into a level 1 room account, ensuring access to any unoccupied level 1 room at all times, which puts an end to homelessness. If someone already owns property, then the property they own can be converted into the equivalent residual or room accounts, meaning that all value attained in present systems can be retained and transferred into this other system. It is the relinquishing of responsibility over our physical structures to that which comes after the state. It is the registering with a system of maturity that is in no way in need of your room or your property, and under universal law cannot take that property from you. This is a system of convenience for the people rather than a system that requires that it take advantage of you. Theoretically, you could allow an app or an auditor to measure the square footage of a room, and based on that, the owner would either be in possession of a room-level account corresponding to their property size, or they can instantly sell their property, so to speak, to the system which would give them in return the equivalent residual income account for the size of the property. Currency presently in use can be used to purchase and upgrade residual income accounts. The goal is a system that allows people to casually exit the workforce. Individuals will not be needed as much, nor will they be forced to carry such a burden in technologically advanced and philosophically advanced cultures, leaving them with time to go off and become supreme beings of leisure. Under universal law, no one has the right to take anything from another without their consent unless they have violated universal law. This will include all property and housing rights, so that no one has their shelter or their property removed from them unless they have committed the only crime of initiating aggression against another. This is different than in present systems that put the fragility of the system above all things, including universal law when they show routine examples of violating universal law to try to inflate the value of valueless things like their fiat currency or their trailers and studio apartments. Everything in our communities are left unkempt while all focus, attention, and energy go towards whatever is going on in their gated communities. This new system will allow us to work on and upgrade our own local communities, not just theirs. I'm going to put this into bullet point format and make it as short as possible. We have inherited the continuation of systems. It's not necessarily anyone's fault that they are there, but it does come along with inherent system flaws that have and will cause calamity in people's lives. What I will describe to you here are potential ways to solve for those issues. These are just suggestions. We should vote on courses of action, and these are concepts we can vote on. Here is a plan to implement a system of abundance. In recognition of the fact that fiat currency is subject to inflation and deflation and the cause of instability when the currency is devalued, we will fix the currency at a set price. Currency is an agreement. It is what we say it is and does what we say it does. This currency is not created by banks with interest when they decide to print it into the air backed by nothing. Instead, as an incentive within the system, the currency is created when excess resources are turned into nearby distribution centers for credit. This is a loose measurement of consumable resources being produced. 
As much currency as is needed for everything to function can come into existence through the measurement of actual goods being turned into collection and distribution centers. The currency remains in circulation until it is periodically destroyed through the collective purchase of mutual resources or public works decided on through all participatory topical voting sequences. I usually lose everyone at the concept of housing because everyone wants to sell their home for a profit. I can understand that. But consider a system where all structures are public resources and are owned by everyone. This doesn't mean that everyone has access to everything at all times. In fact, no one can ever access your property. It would just mean the ability to move away from the rooms and the structures at will and with ease. Instead of being tied down by contracts, we could simply log in and log out of the rooms or the structures as we choose. These concepts require a system that is taking care of everyone directly and does not require someone at the other end of a contract who needs you to continue leasing a room or a car, for example. Instead, we are all independent and we all work directly for the central system, performing different roles in different locations or times. Operating this system is like playing a video game. No one can tell you when you need to play the game, it is available all the time. When one chooses to, they can progress through the game at their pace by choosing to participate in various ways. When one stops playing the game, they are not penalized, nor would they have their progress taken away from them. This is achieved in various ways, including the recognition of the fact that we cannot properly measure people's value or their achievements. We will miss a million good deeds that someone does that will go unrecognized. They will not get paid for the time invested in those deeds. So the least we can do is change the base operation of the system so that there is a solid foundation to stand on at every level of progress and we are not continually forced back from what we have attained. To do this, I recommend that we each have access to a residual income account. Similar to their concept of universal basic income, this should be an account that we all have from birth, and one that we can work on basically as our retirement account, that we can work on our entire lives and which can be used to check out at any time. This is to intentionally reduce the workforce or to make the workforce more casual and not as desperate as the conditions of the world change through time. A residual income for all would allow people to operate with dignity throughout their lives as conditions in the world and in their lives change. Consider a leveling system where people can purchase higher levels of residual income. Each level should be progressively harder to reach. This residual income can be used to check out of the system at any time at whatever level feels comfortable for you. This would be ensuring retirement for all and retirement at the age you choose. There will not be an issue in the size of the workforce. In fact, there should be more people available for work than there are jobs at any given point. But then it's really a matter of perception, as there is an infinite amount of work that can be done in any location. Most of your workforce is on standby being forced to sit out due to your continual revetting of our profiles. Work should be local and accessible to anyone whenever they want to access it, instead of it being held away from people. Anyone who wishes to be productive can choose to do so at any time and they can access a database of tasks and jobs that are always available. Work and housing should never be in question. Returning to the concept of residual income, one's residual income account can be converted into a room or property account which determines the amount of residential square footage you can occupy and control. The two primary classifications of property type are residential and utility. Each property type would have slightly different rules. For example, utility structures and rooms are up for continual auditing and are available as shared resources whose schedule for use may have to be worked out in advance. Whereas a residential room or structure cannot be audited without consent unless there is suspicion of criminal activity, and once claimed, no one else may claim a residential property. Residential accounts can be used to control a certain amount of square footage of space that is going to be used for housing. This can include plots of land and spaces within larger structures. You can purchase multiple residual income accounts and you can dedicate one or more of those accounts to the claiming of a room or property. This is where I lose a lot of people, but this would take the place of rent and mortgages. No, we would never pay off a house 
but under the principles of universal law we cannot be removed from our property unless we have violated universal law. Which comes down to the idea of ownership. Do we ever really own our property in present systems with property tax? The concept of ownership is just an idea. As long as no one can remove us from our property, and as long as we are free to leave when we choose, then technically we own that property for the duration of time that we choose to keep it. In this system, you own whatever property you are presently using. You own your room, or you can own an entire structure composed of many rooms. You can choose to leave your property or your room and redirect your residual income account to another room at the corresponding room level or under. Or you could convert the room or property account back into the corresponding residual income account. If you chose to claim a room under your purchased room level, you could receive the difference in credit as residual income. So based on size, a 100 square foot room would automatically be available with the level 1 residual income account that all citizens should start out with. You could start each citizen out with two level 1 residual accounts. One that guarantees at minimum a level 1 room at 100 credits per month and a level 1 residual income of 100 credits per month for all other expenses. They can then level up these accounts or purchase additional accounts. A corresponding residual income account would be required to access all unoccupied rooms at that room level or under. With room mapping technology, we can see what rooms are available to us, and we can claim them simply by logging into them if not in use, or we can get on a waiting list and choose to take the room or pass on the room when it becomes available. To transition to this system from present systems and retain most of the value people have achieved, and to trade it into this other system, you could allow people to use their fiat to trade for resource-backed fixed-value credit. They can use that credit amount to purchase residual income accounts so they are secure despite any world or systemic events. And you can also allow them to add their properties or their rooms to the database of participating structures or areas by allowing them to measure the room or structure size of the property they presently own and convert that into the corresponding room account which can be traded for a corresponding residual income account. They can choose to stay in their room or keep their property, or leave at their discretion and claim the corresponding residual income account in the amount corresponding to their room or property size. So boom, the revolution just happened, and you never noticed a thing. Nobody's property was seized, nothing was taken from anyone. Everyone has the ability to transfer and retain the value of everything they have achieved in the former system. This system re-establishes the totality of the workforce and allows us to work on improving our lives from as early on as we are capable. Instead of deferring a large portion of the years we could be working bettering our lives for our future, we are able to begin doing productive things that we can be compensated for from much earlier on in our lives. When things are a choice, we may choose to integrate education into mentorship programs that fuse and integrate learning with living so that we are not forced to wait out the first quarter of our lives, being unproductive in public schooling. This is not a mad dash to the next level of the hustle culture. Rather, this is the highly intelligent, highly productive leisure culture that is smart enough to infuse all aspects of life into highly organized routines and advance their technologies in a mutually beneficial fashion, we should be working towards automation, lessening the burden on us as individuals, and eventually creating a well-rounded hustle-leisure culture. This system produces an infinite workforce for all tasks. Jobs are broken down into tasks. Many jobs are no longer jobs or ongoing positions or roles, but completable tasks. Many times, present systems will protect various inefficient aspects of itself to the dismay of the customer or a person in need of something. They can get out of doing all kinds of work or overcharge for things based on the monopoly of availability. In this infinite workforce for all tasks system, all tasks are up for grabs at all times in a bidding system. If someone is being too lazy and doesn't want to do the work, then it is immediately available to someone else. These task completion systems can be used for everything from fixing your car to answering the phone which so many companies don't want to do anymore. Now as a completable task, it would be available to large pools of qualified people 
and would go to whoever is closest, first, most qualified, or whomever accepts the bid at a certain price. Not all tasks would operate on the exact same bidding model, some may have no bidding model at all, and some task sets would look exactly like a regular job that you have today. However, it may be possible to share that responsibility with larger groups of people in some cases, potentially reducing the workload on individuals, while allowing for advanced scheduling programs to be used, and the ability to drop shifts without consequence, and the ability to make extra credit when accepting a task on short notice. Completable tasks can come from ongoing task sets that would look like anything from ongoing restaurant positions to completable tasks issued by the central system or by other people. You could create your own completable task and get credit for completing it. Like fixing that pothole that everyone complains about, anything that can be a measurable improvement to the environment or to people's lives could be a creditable task. In a system of abundance, anything productive can be given credit for compensation, as it is more a matter of distribution instead of hoarding, and anything productive is a reason to allow for access to resources. You could do something as simple as picking up a rock and moving it to a pile of rocks. An auditor or artificial intelligence program could measure before and after pictures of your work. You moved five rocks, you get five credits. All transactions should have a minimum of a one credit value. So no transaction should be less than one credit for simplicity's sake and for the sake of unmeasured effort. It should not matter if the currency does not have a value of less than one as this currency cannot be used to adversely affect another. Rather, it determines one's level of access when interacting directly with the system. There are many concepts here concerning the application of the infinite workforce for all task system and the task completion system. We can be credited down to a fine detail with completed task sets. Tasks can be made available in a collective database of available tasks, and it should be as simple as opening up a map program and selecting the tasks we wish to complete or perform. Everyone should have the ability to access all available tasks and earn credit for completing them as long as they have taken self-paced education courses and any necessary mentorship courses. Once completed, all tasks at their level or under for that particular job type becomes available to them. This system envisions a new type of holistic, productive local working community. We can live in advanced communities where we spend the majority of our time producing goods and services locally. Entire communities can emerge that are dedicated to the production of various resources. They can specialize in one thing as an exportable good, while conducting all necessary functions required for life at a local level. Once each community is producing locally at a level where they have enough to share, an exergonic economy is accomplished, and the system will produce eternal abundance for all, by properly integrating with and working with God's eternal abundance engine.